Hey guys, it's me, Strictly 9 to 5 here, and today we are back with another novel AI tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to go in depth in terms of all the different variations and settings that you can adjust on novel AI's image generation engine. And we're going to go in depth in terms of what you can tweak, and I'll give you some of my experience and tips as well. So we are going to start off first with the basics of prompts. Now since this is an AI art channel, we're going to be doing uh, in terms of Gene from Genshin Impact because that's something that we have done on the channel already in terms of tutorials of how to create this character. So uh, we're going to go ahead and generate Gene from Genshin Impact. And as you can see now, uh, it does, doesn't look much anything like Gene. And what we can actually do here is, for example, to, to emphasize on certain words that we want. Let's say we want to keep this emphasis on blonde hair. We can actually use these brackets that we see right here. And for example, we want to emphasize on woman as well. And we're going to go ahead and, and emphasize on these two points and generate another image. So as you can see, it focuses down and, and it gives us what exactly we want. We can change this blonde hair to like long hair and stuff like that as and when we want as well. Doesn't really matter. Next thing I want to teach you about is variations. So when you press the variations button, it actually just takes the same image and multiplies it into three uh, different uh, variations of the original copy. So you spend a little bit more endless as well. And once it generates these three images, for example, I, if I really like this image, this original image here, what I can actually do now is I can click on it and I can actually uh, use it in terms of, you. so you, you hold it and then you drag and over here, they give you several settings, whether you want to import, import with settings and import with settings plus seed. And let's go ahead and just import it here. So some of you might be wondering if you are generating halfway and you realize all the images are coming out more or less the same. The reason is because uh, you, you want to check your top left right hand, the top left hand corner here to see whether you have a reference image that's here. What it means is it's going to take into account this image when it's generating your subsequent images. This is when you like maybe a certain pose or a certain uh, uh, look to it. So let's go ahead and for example, let's do uh, Hinata from Naruto. Alright, so as you can see here, it has some looks of Hinata, although not really very perfect as well. We have other anime tutorials on how we go more in depth into making the characters look more realistic. But for the sake of this tutorial video, we are going to actually just use whatever the engine gives us. And I'm just going to showcase you how you can use uh, certain features in the, in the category. So as you can see, he's referencing this old image very closely, the, this one's here. And it's going to try to pull up uh, a combination of whatever you're prompting to try to give you something very similar to what you're looking for as well. Of course, it does cause a little bit of endless when you are referencing certain images and that is useful to note as well. Okay, so now next step. Now we're going to make sure we're going to cross that so it doesn't keep referencing the images. And uh, we're going to now talk about seeding. So for example, if we really like this image, we can actually click here to copy the seed to the clipboard. And we can actually put the seed right here. So what a seed is actually in Novo AI is the exact same way that AI has calculated your image. Uh, and each random generation that you use actually has a unique seed to it. It can't be used outside of a Novo AI Arts engine. And what you want to uh, note is that the settings that you use to create this seed has to be the same in order for it to be very uh, applicable as well. I don't really use the seed function as much as I use the, the just dragging the image and importing the image here. I find this referencing much quicker and it gives you exactly what uh, the kind of images that you're looking for. So I use this more than seeding, but both of them work really well as well and not to mention seeding actually doesn't increase the endless cost whereas referencing images does so that's just something uh, for you guys to know so next up let's now talk a little bit about the the information here on the right hand side so let's talk first about the three different uh, uh, diffusion engines that you can use or rather diffusion enemy curated diffusion enemy full and diffusion furry now furry is pretty obvious is uh, for all of you who are trying to make like uh, animal characters or maybe your character in your video game has a sort of a furry that you want to recreate in terms of like pets with that, that look this is going to be really great for generating those uh, kind of hy hybrid human human uh, animal characters um, the real difference between curated from full as what I can feel curated gives a much more filtered set of results it gives more uh, it's, it's much easier to use curated when you're first starting out and full the main reason why full is really good is especially when you're looking for explicit or NSFW content then this one will give you the whole entire range and spectrum curated doesn't give that much and next up so we have image resolution here and in terms of image res resolution for uh, the what we are using you can go up to a very large 
uh, sizing. Of course, you can go large plus. Now they have all these different features. Previously, when I first started out Novo AI, they didn't offer such uh, high definition one. But for me, I most likely like to use normal because it's also the cheapest in terms of generation. As you can see here, uh, large it becomes like three times as much. And how much does large plus cost? So large plus is like five times the cost of a normal portrait. Uh, shot. You could actually use enhancement uh, techniques which I've taught in the video already. I'll link in the video card above or you guys can just check my channel uh, how to use small images and then enhance them up to become higher definition and more beautiful as well. So you don't have to like waste this money on, on exporting very large images to begin with. You want to first look for an image that you like and then pull it up later on. So that's for that. This is just the, the ratio, the aspect ratio of the, the images, of the dimensions rather, of how you want the image to look. And number of images is clear cut. For example, we put four, it increases the cost uh, by the same amount of magnitude. And as you can see, we will create four uh, images of the same kind. And next up we have uh, undesired content and model specific settings. So first up we have uh, low quality, bad anatomy, low quality and none. Um, I usually stick to low quality and bad anatomy most of the time. I would say it's because the sample size for the images that I'm generating usually it tends to be quite large. And if you are going for a very niche like specific where your prompts are very specific and niche, where you're looking for something uh, very specific in particular, then you can consider expanding in terms of the options if you're not getting a good amount of variety in what you have. But for the most part, I do find sticking with low quality bad anatomy more or less uh, sufficient. So uh, the only reason I'll switch to low quality is when I'm getting too much of like the same image and I don't see any variations, which means that I'm too specific. And next up, uh, we have this text words here that uh, we, we have, and this is actually the words that you don't want inside your your your, en your AI engine to take into account. So for example, if I'm, I'm looking for more of an adult woman, I would uh, eliminate words like young and girl in the feature and belly buttons just look pretty uh, unusual so I also remove that as well. Of course if you if you take them all aside um, anything that is that's here will be added to whatever is undesired. So for example if you're looking for no male characters or maybe no uh, no tall characters and stuff like that you can always uh, put these two terms in. In terms of quality text here you can toggle this on and off, but what this means is actually adds the the is the equivalent of adding the words like masterpiece and high quality image to the back of like everything. So most people actually like to use masterpiece and high quality to every single prompt. This is just a convenience factor. If you have this ticked on, this will automatically be in place, and you don't have to actually type this out. So you can toggle it on and off as and when you want as well. And next, steps and skills. Now this one is a little bit more technical in terms of how the AI works. In terms of steps, it's basically defined as the number of reiterations the AI should refine the initial creation of your prompt. You can use like a really low amount of steps to generate the image real uh, quickly and not process it too much through the AI. And of course, you can just see, uh, if you like it, you can go with uh, the same amount or if you want something more specific and you're looking for a more processed image you can of course bump it up to a much higher amount as well uh, you can just consider looking at all your your images and then toggle this amount as and when you fancy because for each image it definitely varies in terms of how much processing you want for me i hardly touch this amount i usually leave it at 28 uh, for steps and 11 for scale now scale on the other hand, it really is the value of how much the AI is sticking to what you are proposing right here. So a very low amount means that the AI is free to use its crea creativity and imagination to form images, whereas a very high amount means it's very strict and follows very closely with what is being proposed here. So you might say that a high amount might be really good, but not really because you might not get these kind of like variations in your images when you're generating, because a lot of the background, for example, the poses do come about from the AI's own interpretation of your, your information. We've talked about seed a little earlier and of course uh, last but not least we want to talk about the sampler that we use. In in a sense most samplers uh, we will be using is Euler Ancestral or, or for me I use Euler and this is really more of like a, a advanced techniques of switching around. I would recommend you not switch away from Euler Ancestral just stick to this for now and uh, I'll do a follow-up video especially when you guys get more experience and learning about more content and telling you the differences and why I use uh, certain samplers rather than other samplers as well. Alright, so the last thing I want to talk about is actually using the enhance button on uh, Novo AI. So what, and when you click on the enhance image on an image that you really like, you realize that you have three or two different toggles. You have one for the magnitude 
and one for the upscale amount as well. And of course, the endless does change quite significantly as you toggle it. So what enhancing is, it basically passes the generated images that's already been generated through the Novo AI's diffusion engine for a second time to improve the image quality based on the prompts that you have selected. It differs from upscaling in a way, in terms of this upscaling, is that your text prompt affects your enhancement as well, allowing you to, for example, change this up a little bit to adjust your prompts so that uh, you can focus on certain aspects if you're missing. For example, maybe if this one wasn't like blonde hair and I wanted to put it more of a blonde hair, I can change my words and emphasize a little bit more on blonde hair to get it into the exact same way as you want as well. Okay, so the magnitude slider uses a combination of values of strength and noise. In a sense, uh, you can select the individual settings options to set the values yourself. But So let's just click it here. So in terms of these two settings, you can actually, once you press this button, you can actually adjust this based on how you feel like it. This is more towards the advanced uh, tutorial, but I'll add it in this video as well because I think it's quite useful for you guys to know. So the difference between these two is setting a high strength value will change the image uh, very significantly. Whereas a low uh, generation of strength means that it's going to uh, stick to rather what the image looked like uh, when it was first generated, the first image that you're using to reference. And a higher noise setting may allow the AI to generate more uh, detail in, in the image as well. So you can toggle this on, play in however you like if you feel like it. I, To be honest, I hardly use this one. I'd rather generate more images in terms of mass bulk and quantity. But if you are trying to like min max and find the best image, this will probably be the most efficient way of finding it as well. And there you have it. If you want to see how I monetize AI art or perhaps give you more in-depth tutorials on creating enemy characters to be exactly what I'm looking for and not have too much wastage, do check out these other videos I have on the channel already. Like and subscribe for more AI anime art tutorials and see you in the next video.